In this problem, we will evaluate the limit as x approaches 2 of 3x squared minus 7x plus 2 over x squared plus x minus 6. When evaluating a limit, your first line of defense, or perhaps the first thing you could try, is direct substitution. And what I'll do is I'll substitute a 2 for every occurrence of x and see if I actually get a real number back again, see if I get a value from that. And if I do, if direct substitution yields a value when finding the limit of a rational function like this, that value would be the limit. But here what happens, 2 squared is 4 times 3 is 12 minus 14 plus 2 is 0 in the numerator. And 2 squared is 4 plus 2 is 6 minus 6 is 0 in the denominator is undefined. 0 over 0 doesn't have a value. However, this does imply that the limit exists. Although direct substitution has told me not a thing about what the actual limit is, 0 over 0, this indeterminate form does imply that the limit exists. I'll find that limit by simplifying using factoring. When factoring the numerator and denominator of this limit, the denominator is easier to factor because there's not a coefficient on the x squared, or I should say the coefficient on x squared is 1. And when that's the case in a quadratic, you can factor it by setting up two binomials, which have a first term of x, and the second term, the second term, will be two values, the second terms will be two values whose product is negative 6, the constant in the quadratic, and whose sum is the coefficient on the linear term, which in this case is 1. So to complete the factoring of this denominator, I will think of two numbers that have a product of negative 6 and a sum of 1. There's only two pairs of factors for 6, 6 and 1 and 2 and 3. The pair that would give a product of negative 6 and a sum of positive 1 would be negative 2 and plus 3. The factorization of x squared plus x minus 6 is x minus 2 times x plus 3. The numerator is a little bit more difficult to factor because there is a coefficient on x squared other than 1. It's 3. There's a number of methods that you can use when attempting to factor this. One method is known as the tic-tac-toe method. I have a link in the description of this video uh, to another video that describes the tic-tac-toe method in more detail, but I'll briefly perform this method to factor 3x squared minus 7x plus 2. I'm going to make a tic-tac-toe board, and in the first row, put the value of a, the coefficient on x squared, and the constant, and in the final column of the first row, I'll write their product, which is 6, positive 6. Beside the tic-tac-toe board, so this was again a times c in the first row of the tic-tac-toe board, beside the tic-tac-toe board, I'm going to put the value of b, which is negative 7. And now I'm going to determine for the values in the final column, the third column of the tic-tac-toe board, two values that have a product of 6 and a sum of negative 7 a product of positive 6 and a sum of negative 7. The only two numbers that have that property would be negative 6 and negative 1. The order that you write those two values in doesn't matter. I put a negative 6 in the bottom row and a negative 1 in the second row of the last column, but those could be reversed. The important thing is that these two values, negative 6 and negative 1, have a product of positive 6, and if you add them up, you get negative 7. To complete the tic-tac-toe board, I'm going to fill in some values that across the second and third row have a product of negative 1 and negative 6. And if you would multiply up the second and first column, you would get a product of 3 and 2. This one is fairly easy to complete because, and I'm going to fill these in with integers, and this is fairly easy to complete because the only integers that would give a product of negative 1 would be 1 and 1. Now, of course, one of those factors has to be negative because if I consider now the second column, 
if I consider this second column, um, I know that the number that I put in the bottom row of the second column has to be a number that would give a product of two. The only value, the only value that would give a product of two when multiplied by one would of course be two. Uh, and I still have to account for the positive and negative signs, but before I do that, I'll think about multiplying across the bottom row, what times two would be six, and that would have to be three. Again, this has to be negative six when I multiply across, so I'm gonna make the two negative. And if this two is negative, the one right above it would also have to be negative because multiplying negative two up this second column, multiplying negative two times negative one would give you positive two. And multiplying now across the second row, one times negative one will give you the negative one. So at this point, I filled in the tic-tac-toe board with numbers in the bottom left-hand corner. One times negative one is negative one. Across the bottom row, three times negative two is negative six. And then up the first column, three times one is three. Negative two times negative one in the second column makes positive two. The tic-tac-toe board is complete. The factorization is hiding inside the tic-tac-toe board diagonally in the bottom left-hand corner. One and negative two, one and negative two represent the coefficients of the first factor. So the first factor would be one X or just X minus two. The second factor, three and negative one, three X minus one. The factorization of three X squared minus seven X plus two is X minus two times three X minus one. You can verify that this is correct by multiplying x minus two times three x minus one. If you would do that multiplication, you would get three x squared minus seven x plus two. Once this is factored, once this is factored, you can see that there is a common factor of x minus two in both the numerator and denominator. I'm gonna cancel those out and the limit as x approaches two of 3x minus 1 over x plus 3 is equivalent to the original limit. By the way, if, if I was looking at a function, f of x equals 3x squared minus 7x plus 2 over x squared plus x minus 6, this does not equal the function 3x minus 1 over x plus 3. It's close, it actually equals, these functions are equal everywhere except where x equals two, but they're not equal. However, the limits are, the limit as x approaches two of x minus two times three x minus one over x minus two times x plus three is equal to the limit of three x minus one over x plus three. So those factors of x minus two can be eliminated and the value of the limit doesn't change. These functions change, the, the, the two associated functions would change a bit. Like I said, at one X value, they're different, X equals two, but the limits are identical. Once you eliminate the X minus twos, the limit as X approaches two of three X minus one over X plus three can be evaluated by direct substitution. What I'll do is substitute a two for the X in the numerator and a two for the X in the denominator and I'll see that three times two is six, two plus three is five, five over five equals one. The limit as X approaches two of three X squared minus seven X plus two over X squared plus X minus six is equal to one.